This SciShow video is supported by Brilliant. As a SciShow viewer, you can keep building your STEM skills with 20% off an annual premium subscription at brilliant.org slash scishow. If you've never seen a banana tree, you might not realize just how impressive they can be. They tower over you and can be 6 to 12 meters tall. Which isn't like the biggest tree, but the entire plant grows and produces fruit within a single year. The catch is that it will only produce fruit once. After this, the entire above-ground part of the plant dies, and you need to cut the tree down to its underground stem and roots. This lets the new shoots, called suckers, grow and give you more bananas the following year. This cycle can go on year after year, which is good, since most types of farmed bananas don't produce seeds. Now, I kind of lied to you, because banana trees aren't technically trees at all. Their trunk isn't made out of wood. It's called a pseudostem, because because it's just very tightly packed leaves. You might see where this is going. After you sell your delicious bananas, you're left with those massive stalks you need to cut down every year. That's a ton of plant waste. Not everyone wants to eat green bananas the color, but everyone would like to eat green bananas the environmentally friendly kind. Their carbon footprint isn't huge compared to other foods, but it would be nice to put all that waste to some good use. Because the world isn't about to give up smoothies. Bananas are the world's largest fruit crop, if you classify tomatoes as a vegetable. So just have at it in the comments. Just fight and we'll watch. Over 150 million tons of bananas and plantains are grown every year. The catch is that 88% of a banana plant is inedible. That means over 1.3 billion tons of banana waste every year. That's the weight of around 250 Great Pyramids of Giza. But where there is a problem, there can also be an opportunity. Many researchers think that all this waste could actually be ripe for a bunch of potential uses. From plastics to energy and even skateboards, many researchers have looked into how to turn all this waste into something valuable. Now, reusing parts of a banana plant isn't a new idea. Many cultures have long used the leaves as food packaging and fibers for clothing and ropes. And some folks eat additional parts, like the core of the pseudostem or the flowers before they turn into fruit. Plant waste is often used as fertilizer or as food for livestock, which makes sense. Except that the banana byproducts lack nutrition, so they're not ideal for that kind of thing. So much of the banana waste goes to waste. It rots or is burned, which can create environmental and air quality issues. And that's a big part of why repurposing it into something else is so exciting. So let's start with the basics. Banana stems are too flexible to build anything rigid on their own, but they have a ton of fibrous material in them. And we already use similar fiber from cotton, sugarcane, corn, and many other plants. Just like wood, banana pseudostems can be converted into paper. And it turns out it's more water resistant and stronger than paper made from wood pulp. The fibers from banana pseudostems can also be mixed with plastic polymers to strengthen them. Researchers have built everything from furniture to skateboards out of these banana fiber-strengthened materials. One study found that adding pseudostem fibers to epoxy resin increased its impact strength by 40% and its tensile strength by 90%. Another found that polyester resin skateboard decks reinforced with 15% banana stems had excellent strength and flexibility, which might be important for skateboarders I would not know. When you get right down to it, but all that fiber is made of cellulose, an organic compound that helps give plants their structure. And we can find chemical uses for the cellulose as well. Researchers have found that the amount of cellulose in banana pseudostems makes them ideal for bioplastic. To make traditional plastic, you start with fossil fuels as your raw material. Instead, bioplastics use sustainable sources like cellulose, which generally grew like last year, as opposed to a couple of geologic eras ago. This means that we don't need to rely on fossil fuels as much. Manufacturing the plastic tends to emit less carbon, and the plastic tends to break down faster once you throw it away. But growing plants specifically to make plastic can lead to other environmental issues from fertilizer and pesticides. It would be perfect if there were already a massive amount of plant waste just lying around. Researchers have found that you can make anything from a rigid plastic tray to a flexible plastic bag from banana pseudostems. And it would theoretically be recyclable up to three times, at least if it was under laboratory conditions. 
things. And one job banana bioplastic is suited for is packaging other produce. The science of packaging fruits for shipment is pretty complex. You not only need to protect the fruit on its journey, you also need to control how quickly it ripens so that it's not past its prime when it hits the shelves. Take mangoes, for example. Like many fruits, they release a gas called ethylene, which causes them to ripen. So you need a package that allows this gas to escape. How permeable a plastic film is to gases depends on things like the plastic's density and the characteristics of its molecules. And it turns out cellulose film has a much higher gas permeability than polyethylene, the most common fruit packaging material. A 2021 study found packaging made from banana plants delayed the ripening of mangoes compared to the standard polyethylene plastic. And when composted, it decomposed in just four weeks, much faster than the standard plastic packaging. Believe it or not, this is just the start. Carbon powder made from heated banana peels has antibacterial properties, and similar powder could play a role in making low-cost solar panels. Fabric, food thickeners, biofuels, contaminant absorbers, scientists have found tons of potential in banana plant waste. But the catch is that almost all of these are in the early research stage. For example, some bioplastics researchers envision a future where banana farmers could make extra money by grinding pseudostims into powder and selling it to plastic makers. But way more work is needed to set up a whole banana bioplastics supply chain. Farmers and plastic makers would need to agree on how that powder is made and transported to manufacturing facilities. On the other end of things, customers and businesses would need to make the switch to banana bioplastics. It would be a tremendous amount of work to get everybody on the same page. Despite this, everybody agrees that banana waste is a tremendous opportunity. It shows how you can take waste being produced anyways and turn it into something much more appealing. Thanks for watching this SciShow video, and thank you to Brilliant for supporting it. There were a lot of percentages in this episode, from the 88% of the banana plant that's inedible to the 15% of your skateboard deck that could be reinforced with banana stems. And if that kind of everyday use of percentages lights your fire, then you will enjoy the Everyday Math Brilliant course. Brilliant is an online learning platform with courses in science, computer science, and everyday math. Through interactive puzzles and lessons, they bring you into the world of STEM. And in this course especially, they bring STEM into the world. This course has no prerequisites and can be a great way to reinforce your math foundations by putting percents, fractions, and ratios into everyday contexts. You can check it out along with over 60 other Brilliant courses by clicking the link in the description down below or going to brilliant.org scishow. As a scishow viewer, you will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. With Brilliant, math does not have to make you go bananas.